In the previous two parts, we considered the importance of unifying behaviour across backtesting and live trading in relation to the use of price data. We looked at the differences between how data is delivered to the EA by the backtesting engine compared to live trading, and then we turned our attention to the two tick models available in MT5. We now turn our attention to the other two options available for backtesting in MT5, which are the 1 minute OHLC and the open price models. So let's first take a look at 1 minute OHLC. This delivers four ticks to the EA for each one minute bar. And in many respects, it's actually similar to the synthetic ticks that we just saw a moment ago, but without the interim ticks. And this is a representation of what this data might look like. So the four rows highlighted here in red represent the four ticks from a one minute period. And as you can see, MetaTrader synthesizes these as arriving at 20 second intervals. Now I think it's useful to consider how each of these four ticks would actually contribute to the evolution of a one minute bar. And so the first tick that comes in here, you can see at this point, the one minute bar has all of the same values for open, high, low and close because the bar has just started. As the second tick comes in, in this case, it's a low tick. And so here, this modifies the value of the low, but of course, also the close, which will change with every tick. And because the previous tick was a low, then the third tick has to be the high. And this now modifies the high value, and again, the close value of the M1 bar. And then finally, as the last tick of the minute arrives, this changes again the close value. So if we look at what happens to the previous M1 bar, because clearly you might be accessing this from the code or your indicators will be accessing this, as you can see, this remains fixed because this is now a closed bar. So if you were watching a chart while these four ticks were arriving, this is what the evolution of that M1 bar would look like. Now the situation here in terms of the order of the high and the low is the same as with the synthetic ticks that we looked at in the previous part. So MT5 again is forced to make an educated guess at what that order was most likely to be. So in this particular scenario, because the low is much closer to the open, this is probably what happened. However, again, this might have been what actually happened in the actual price feed at the time. So let's now move on to the final model, which is open prices only. In this model, only one tick is delivered to the expert advisor for every new bar in the chosen time frame. So when using the backtest settings shown in the image below, with the M15 chart selected, this would result in just one tick being delivered to the EA for every 15 minutes. However, clearly, if you set this to the M1 chart, then you'd get one tick for every minute. And using M1 data in this way tends to be my preferred mechanism for testing, given that my trading systems have an average trade duration of between 8 and 24 hours. And this model is by far the fastest model for backtesting in MT5. So if we consider the M1 chart here getting one tick per minute compared to the real tick scenario where in the example we looked at there were 123 ticks in a minute, then this would be approximately 100 times quicker at processing. Obviously running this model on the 15 minute chart would be even quicker. Now, because we're concerned with unifying behavior across backtesting and live trading, using this model, you can actually get closer behavior between the two than you can with real tick data. And the reason for that is because you can take trading decisions based on the previous closed bar at the time that the new bar opens. And because those values are identical, regardless of whether you're backtesting or in a real trading scenario, the results you achieve can be incredibly similar. Now, the reason that this can be even closer than real tick data is because in that scenario, remember, not every tick is processed in a live trading environment, 
whereas it is in a backtest environment. So that introduces a difference between the two that we don't have here. But remember, this model will only give you that advantage if your code specifically controls bar opening. If it doesn't, then the results will be wildly different. Now, before we move on, I think it's just worth looking at this particular setting in the MT5 strategy tester and talking about the implications of this for different price data modeling. So firstly, this value has absolutely no impact whatsoever on the ticks that are delivered to the expert advisor when you use one of these three settings. Every tick, every tick using real ticks, and one minute OHLC. This setting only impacts the ticks that are delivered when you're using the open prices setting, as I explained on the previous slide. However, if you use the period function within the code of your expert advisor, then that will determine the time frame that's used for indicator data and other processing of information within your expert, regardless of the price model used. So across all four price modeling techniques, this has an impact there. So for my own trading, I mentioned a moment ago, I tend to have this setting set to M1 so that I process one tick for every minute period. But clearly, I don't actually want to trade on that time frame. So I have separate input variables which determine the time frame of my signal, filter, trigger and so on. So for me, I use this setting purely to determine how many ticks get delivered to my EA during the backtest. So let's now, again, in the same way as we did before, look at a representation of the data that's delivered to the expert advisor when using the open prices only model. Now, the data shown here in the example assumes that the chart time frame setting in the strategy tester was set to M5. And that means that we get one tick for each five minute period. So the three ticks that you see here represent a 15 minute period. Now, if we look at the M5 bar data at the point in time when the tick is delivered to the expert advisor, you can see the current bar has equal values for the open, the high, the low and the close. And that makes sense because this bar has just opened. And that's the reason why most traders who use this model prefer to use the previous bar data to make their trading decisions. So the bar that closed just a moment ago. And this bar has true locked in values for the open, the high, the low and the close. Now you'll remember from what I said in part one that there are two main factors that determine the mode of operation of an expert advisor. One is the way that ticks are delivered to the expert and that's what we've now covered. We've looked at the four models used in a backtest context, and we've also looked at how these are delivered in live. So now we turn our attention to the coding mechanisms that are built into an EA in order to determine if one of those ticks that's delivered is actually processed or not. So why is it important that we do this? Well, if you use a non-tick based method in backtesting, then your expert advisor will only be sent a cut down number of ticks by the strategy tester. So a couple of examples that we've already looked at, if you're using open prices on the M15 chart, then the EA will be sent one tick per 15 minutes. If you're using open prices on the M1 chart, then your EA will be sent one tick per minute. If you're using M1 OHLC, then it will receive four ticks per minute. However, when you put your EA into a live trading account, it's now going to be sent 100 plus ticks per minute. In busy periods during economic news, this might be in excess of 300 ticks per minute. And so you'll see this will result in very, very different behavior between the backtest and the live environment, and it will create very different results. So your trades will have different open times and open prices. They'll have different close times and close prices. And in many cases, you'll also get completely different trades where some will open in live and not in backtest and also vice versa. Now, earlier on in part one, I showed a real life example 
of exactly how this manifests itself, how the difference in processing ticks and closed bars results in different trades being generated. So if you haven't already watched that, I'd highly recommend after you finish this video that you go back and take a look at it. If you use the description below, then you'll find a link to part one there. So the differences that are generated between the trades that are opened is one of the reasons why many traders see such differences between their backtest results and their live results. And it's because they haven't controlled bar opening as part of their EA code. So if you are using open price modeling in your backtests, but you're not controlling bar opening, then you have to ask yourself the question, what is the point of backtesting if your results are going to be so different? So the conclusions that we can draw for this are firstly, you will not produce like for like unified behavior if you're using open prices and not controlling bar opening. Effectively, your backtesting process is flawed. But by taking the relatively simple step of controlling tick processing with code in your EA, this will produce a unified behavior between the two scenarios. And this is why it's so important. Now it's worth going back to the MT4 strategy tester for a moment, because they used to put a warning against this particular option where it said it's the fastest method to analyze the bar just completed, but only for expert advisors that explicitly control bar opening. Now, for some reason, this warning has vanished in MT5, but believe me, this still applies. You need to do this if you're using this modeling option. So that's it for this episode, but the next episode I'll be filming will be part of my MQL coding technique series, but it will be very much aligned with what I've been talking about today. So in that episode, I'll be showing you step by step how to get the necessary code into your expert advisor to properly control the handling of price data to unify the behavior between backtest and live. So be sure to look out for that being released. If you want to be notified, then simply subscribe to the channel below and click on the small bell icon. Okay, so that's just about it for today. Until next time, trade safe.